Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're chatting with Greg Beischer from Alaska Energy Metals. Following their recent announcement of an updated resource estimate that sees the company with over 8 billion pounds of inferred and indicated nickel in the ground. The estimate marks a crucial development in the project's life cycle. In this conversation, we'll cover the impact of the updated resource estimate on the company's strategy, the current nickel market landscape, and the environmental concerns in nickel sourcing. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Greg, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, good to be back. So yesterday, a bill passed in the Senate that indicates that the U.S. is getting serious on domestic critical mineral supply chains, which of course includes nickel. From your view, how serious is the U.S. government about ramping up domestic supply chains? Well, I think that'll have to be uh, remain to be seen, Steve, you know, because there's been a bit of a disconnect uh, all along uh, in the uh, administration, the way I see it. Uh, uh, the, uh, the government uh, wants electrification of our society, uh, but we're kind of going at it backwards. I mean, companies are building multi-billion dollar battery plants, uh, car companies are spending billions retooling their assembly lines, uh, but they're not sure that they've got the raw materials to go into those plants, or there's risk that the raw materials could get cut off. But so far, the United States administration hasn't been moving to uh, streamline the permitting process uh, for mining operations in the U.S., and it so far hasn't really encouraged the mining industry to develop mines. But it's got to happen uh, because the United States is really at risk. Uh, uh, you know, Canada's able to supply a fair bit of metal to the United States, uh, probably accounts for half of the, the U.S. Uh, nickel consumption. Uh, but, you know, Canada's building its own battery plants, and I'm not sure it's going to keep shipping all that nickel to the U.S. So we really, as Americans, I feel we really need to develop our own uh, metal resources and nickel in particular. So one of the things I think about a lot when I'm looking at companies like yours or, say, Canada Nickel is this whole battle between class one nickel and, say, some of the laterite projects that exist in Indonesia. How how important do you think it is that we see domestically that the EV producers start focusing on using class one nickel as opposed to, say, some of those laterite projects that exist in places like Indonesia? Right. Well, um, so just to be clear, laterite nickel typically produces class two nickel. That's sort of an iron rich nickel. That's great if you're making stainless steel but uh, has to be further refined uh, to make class one uh, nickel, um, which can be done, but it takes a lot more power. And so the unfortunate thing about Indonesia uh, is that that mining style is really hard on the environment. Uh, I mean, you're, you're cutting down rainforests and then uh, stripping away the earth to remove uh, 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 and then to expose the the nickel ore, laterite ores, and then uh, smelting it uh, often in coal-fired uh, smelters, and and so uh, you know it really kind of destroys the point of us driving electric vehicles to uh, reduce putting carbon in the air. So I think we really have to get away from uh, using that laterite nickel in, in batteries. And I think American and uh, European car manufacturers should not accept that, that nickel. It's just totally counterproductive of what we're trying to do as a society. Okay, so let's talk about Alaska Energy Metals now. Um, just this week, you guys put out a pretty substantial mineral resource estimate. Can you detail the significance of your up, of of your updated resource estimate for the project, what it means for the company? Yeah, I sure could. You know, we published our initial maiden resource in uh, November. Uh, it was pretty substantial in two separate deposits that were um, in the order of two and a half kilometers apart. Um, uh, it was over 1.5 billion pounds of nickel documented in the ground. Um, but uh, the 
drilling that we did last summer, uh, combined with some other historical drill holes that we were able to bring into the model, allowed us to join up between those two deposits to form a single deposit that's roughly four kilometers in length, 300 meters thick, uh, and contains in excess of 8 billion pounds of nickel. Uh, and so it was a five-fold increase in the amount of metal documented in the ground. But several other really uh, positive things came out of that. Uh, first is that uh, with just one pit, uh, we were able to reduce the strip ratio to a very reasonable 1.5 to 1. Uh, so that means that uh, we would only have to remove 1.5 ton of waste rock to get at the valuable rock. So that's that's good. The less waste rock you have to remove, the better. So that was positive. Uh, but also, uh, it turned out a, a bunch of the drilling density, the spacing of the drill holes was close enough in places that uh, close to half the deposit uh, can be classified at the higher confidence level of indicated resource. So just over half is inferred resource. Uh, and then half is, is that indicated. And it's better to move it up in, in terms of confidence level with closer space drilling. But finally, the main positive uh, outcome was that uh, we confirmed our suspicion that there's a high grade near surface uh, core to the deposit, or at least I should say higher grade uh, of a concentration of around 0.35% nickel equivalent. And that's really going to help uh, in the uh, economic analysis uh, of the project. If you've got higher grade near surface mineralization that can uh, uh, be mined first and therefore pay back capital quicker, that positively affects economics every single time. So we're going to really work on, on that going forward. So, so how does the 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 mineral resource estimate and i guess some of the drilling that you guys have done recently change sort of the strategy or the outlook for the company well uh already with over eight billion pounds of, of nickel documented um that starts to move us up or closer to uh our peer companies that have really good traction and certainly by the end of this year we should have a deposit that is comparable in size to the Crawford deposit of Canada Nickel. Uh, we'll will you have a slightly higher grade uh, right now than than that deposit? But uh, Canada Nickel is really blazing the trail for us. They're several years ahead. They've got a positive feasibility study on a 13 billion pound nickel uh, resource. Uh, we'll catch up to that. I'm hoping we catch up to their market cap, which is about $240 million right now, whereas ours is maybe 33. Uh, but yeah, the guys are doing a great job there. They've brought in strategic investors. Uh, recently, Samsung invested to get the offtake or part, part of the offtake from that deposit. Uh, uh, Anglo-American had already invested a year ago and now Agnico Eagles put up big money. Uh, for Canada Nichols operation. Great strategic partners. And uh, I would think that soon uh, with this announcement, we'll uh, uh, be uh, uh, talking to potential strategics also. Where's the disconnect, you think, Greg? Because like, I, I see some of the other nickel projects, like even FPX, they got a, a, a huge uh, investment from a, a couple of notable groups. Um, yet we're, we're not seeing as much sort of traction with some of the retail investors, I think is uh, what you would think some of these institutional names would merit. Where Do, do you have any idea of what the disconnect is? Is, is? is there just sort of a general idea that's out there that, hey, nickel's maybe not gonna be such a big part of the future of battery technology? Do you think it's 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 high interest rates? Uh, why do you think it is that, that we aren't seeing more capital flow into some of these names? 
Yeah, uh, I think the biggest factor uh, right now is uh, nickel price. Uh, the nickel price is soft, uh, despite the spectacular projections on demand. Indonesia, uh, with China's help, has really ramped up their pr production. And again, I don't think we should accept that nickel because it's counterproductive to the electrification narrative. But um, <clears throat> uh, that, that, to me, is the main uh, uh thing holding us back right now. Uh, but nevertheless, I think retail investors will catch on and realize that, you know, it's uh, best to be a contrarian in this business. If a, a metal's down, it's likely to go up. And it's been, you know, rewarding for me to see uranium jump up recently. And, and those people that were smart enough to be picking up uh, uranium stocks, dollar forward averaging over the last six years, all of a sudden were very well rewarded. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not doing uh, this work now for today's nickel price. Uh, uh, we're doing it for uh, years from now. But uh, being a contrarian, it's, as a retail investor, it's a great time to be picking up uh, quality nickel stocks, I think. I saw a comment recently from Robert Friedland talking about how uh, we could find ourselves in a place where there's actually two different types of pricing between class one and class two nickel. Um, are, are you hearing any, any rumblings of, of that happening? Or, or do you think that that's where we're, we're going? No, I, I don't know if it's a different, like a pricing difference for class one or cl class two. There already is a pricing difference on that. It's whether uh, people are willing to pay a premium uh, for ethically, environmentally responsibly sourced metals. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Indonesian nickel is uh, neither one of those things. Uh, but, you know, we really do know how to do things right in, in North America. We have uh, excellent, highly responsible mining industry in both our countries. And um, uh, we, we, we really do protect the environment and we have excellent human rights uh, uh, records. So, um, you know, I, I think people should be willing to pay a premium uh, for ethical, responsible metals. Okay, Greg, last question for you. As we enter the summer here, what should shareholders be looking out for with Alaska Energy Metals? Right. I, you know, I think we've made uh, enormous accomplishments in just nine months, but uh, we certainly won't be taking it easy here. So so a couple of months from now, uh, uh, your, your readers and our shareholders should expect uh, to receive uh, news about our metal recovery testing, our metallurgical work. And that'll be an important consideration for the project. Um, I'm pretty confident that uh, our recovery rates uh, should, should be good uh, because we know that the metals are in minerals that are readily recoverable. They're, they're common minerals that are readily recoverable by standard methods. But that information will come out in a couple months from now. And then before you know it, we're going to be drilling again to, uh, number one, extend the deposit, uh, to uh, focus on the high-grade zone, to move that up to a higher confidence level of measured resource, uh, and then to do a bit of infill uh, drilling. Um, but the outcome should be at the end of the year, we've got uh, a deposit that's uh, almost as uh, big as Canada Nichols uh, deposit in the measured and indicated uh, categories. And, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm able to say that we've got this potential mineral deposit because of the historical drilling. It's sparse drilling, but uh, it's just an amazingly homogeneous and continuous deposit. Everywhere that anyone in the, the past or, or that we've drilled gets almost the same result. It's a, a, a slab of mineralized rock that's roughly 300 meters thick and sort of uniformly mineralized. We get the same concentration of metals just about every time we drill through it. And so we, we have a high confidence level that we'll be able to extend the deposit out to the Southeast. Are there currently any mills uh, in the area that you guys could maybe refurbish or or would that be something that, you, that you'd kind of have to build brand new from oh. scratch? Um, let, 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 theoretically, if you guys were the ones to move this project forward. Yeah, and we can move this project a long ways forward, especially if we get some 
uh, strategic partners that can help with heavy lifting. But but ultimately, uh, uh, you know, we're starting from scratch here. We'd be building a, a mill on site, uh, processing facilities on site. So um, yeah, there there is uh, other mines in Alaska. There's uh, a couple of gold mines uh, further to the north up the highway, but uh, there there is no nickel mines in Alaska. In fact, there's only one nickel mine in all of the United States. It was a small, smallish one, and and uh, uh, that nickel's exported to uh, Canada uh, for processing. So, uh, you know, the nick, uh, uh, America is one hundred percent reliant on on imports right now of nickel, and uh, I just think it would really uh, be a lot better off if it had a, a big source of nickel and cobalt uh, right on home soil. Absolutely. Well, Greg, thanks so much for hopping on here. Something that I love about chatting with you is that you're very transparent and honest with us uh, about uh, the risks to the project and um, also why you're excited about it. Uh, I also see how hard you're working. It seems like every time I talk to you, you're in a different location uh, promoting your 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 deal, uh, standing up for shareholders and doing everything you can to move this project forward. So as a shareholder, uh, I very much appreciate all the hard work you're putting in for the company. And I'm really looking forward to, to seeing some developments this summer. And hopefully you'll keep coming back on here and updating our audience. Well, thank you, Steve. You know, the way I see it, we've got a chance of a, a lifetime here. It's well worth uh, the effort to get out and, and tell potential shareholders about our company because we've got something serious here. Uh, uh, no uh, uh, prospect is without risk, but uh, I think uh, the risk profile here is pretty darn good. And I'm uh, uh, you know, working on this uh, as hard as I can. Perfect. Thanks so much, Greg. All right. Thank you, Steve. Bye. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this interview, please smash that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell. Also, let me know what you think of the comment section. Thanks, everyone.